everyone, Marco Moreno here with my friend Jay Lopez. Today we're going to talk about techniques that you should not use in a self-defense situation. The sport of Jiu-Jitsu is amazing, we love it. Practicing the sport of Jiu-Jitsu helps your timing, helps you practicing your techniques against a resistant opponent, helps you with the cardio, helps you feeling underneath somebody and teach you resilience to escape and overall it just sharpens your techniques but it also has some aspects of techniques that you have to use in a sports jiu-jitsu situation only but at any point you can take this sport jiu-jitsu for a street cell defense situation so let's do a review of some of the techniques that at no point you should be considering in a self-defense situation. And let's start with getting picked up. It's very common in Jiu-Jitsu, uh, let's do the demonstration, that uh, students or athletes get picked up from the guard because here a slams and the sport are not allowed. So for example, here Jay, you wanna uh, open my guard so you're gonna pick, uh, stand up, one, two, and kind of grab my jacket and pick me up. I pick me up here, now I start pushing my knee here, and the guy here is trying to, I'm trying to mm. bring him back down, right? Again, go back. This is a no-no for a three situation, for the reason that, but again, when he picks me up here, and I'm trying, to, the guy is just gonna slam me. <sighs> A big slam, you're out and conscious, 100%. But also triangle, getting picked up in the triangle. I don't think you'll be able to pick me up. Thank you. you think you can? I see that a lot, where guys are here and they're trying to keep finishing, keep locking the triangle here. You guys, never do this. If this happens in three situations, they're gonna boom, slam you and that will be a devastating knockout. Case example, check it out on YouTube. Ricardo Arona got a slam like this by Rampage Jackson a few years ago in Pride. Whenever you have a rear naked choke here and the opponent stands up, I should not stay picked up here trying to do the choke because the guy leans back and they slam you on the ground, you lost consciousness. Now, sometimes you see in UFC where the guys get the rear naked choke mm -hmm. and they get slammed, but they are in a canvas, but you have to consider cement, concrete being a slam, and of course, don't allow that to happen. The next techniques that you should not do in self-defense are techniques that only work for a sport jujitsu. For example, there is a famous uh, video of a guy who goes inverted like this, and he just start like, like hopping the shoulder, hopping with the shoulders, right? And eventually, I think he actually wraps the guy's leg and get him down and heel hook him, right? But, <laughs> It kind of goes without saying, prevent this inversion, right? And you're gonna get stomped, kick in the head, all right? So another one in a sport jujitsu that is very common is spider guard, okay? Never spider guard in a street situation or else, yes. The legs here need to my groin, right? The worst for strict cell defense. Another one, if you stay there for too long, would be X guard. Okay? I love X bar X guard by the way. But I will always be careful not to do in the street because the punch is here. Okay? Unless you come and do it quickly, you might be able to do X guard. But you stay here for too long, you get punched. Another non-sport um, guard could be the deep half guard. 
again if you stay on the deep half for too long this one let's turn this way the camera deep half okay he can punch you from here okay so no deep half i feel like if you come to deep half and then you turn quickly it might work but staying too long in a deep half guard situation avoid that at all cost and of course another sport guard that should never use is the donkey guard should we even demonstrate this i think they should know okay um you standing up the donkey guard is a guard that was created a few years ago which is pretty much uh just giving your back and walking backwards to the opponent right with the idea to catch him here right and for the legs like that. I think they should know <laughs> not to do that. <laughs> there was a, a very interesting uh, situation one time when uh, in a tournament the guy turned, oh. they, he did the donkey guard and the guy went like this and he got disqualified for that because they consider that a kick, okay? So <laughs> no donkey guards in a street self-defense situation. Another technique that you should avoid in a street self-defense situation is the sit-up guard. Okay, we call this supine guard, which is okay in a street self-defense because if you end up here, you can kick the guy, a kick here, and defend yourself like that. But in jujitsu, we have this sit-up guard, right? And it makes sense in jujitsu because uh, there's no kicks, and when the guy tries to grab me, I grab him. Okay. So a lot of sit-up guards, right? But this sit-up guard is gonna cause a stomp knee to the face. So we don't sit-up guard in the street, we do this. And also, of course, that also involves no body squeezing, like move, move back a little bit. <clears throat> like sometimes you get kicked in the face Okay, soccer kick in the face. That will be an instant knockout, knockout. Be aware of not creating the bad habit of transferring this into a self-defense situation. Other technique or hand position that you should avoid, that is very common in sport, but you should avoid for a street self-defense is having your hands tucked like home alone. And in a, let's say mount situation, you can have your hands here across, people do this, because it makes sense, because I wanna uh, block the chokes, mm. right? Prevent the chokes. I don't wanna expose my arms. They always gonna tell you, keep your hands to yourself, like T-Rex hands, like this, because if I push, expose the arm bar, but also expose the choke, like here, like this, okay? So it makes sense to keep your hands like this to yourself, like cross, hold your jacket. Okay, in a street self-defense situation, that's not gonna work because punches come, okay? So in a street self-defense situation, you wanna actually get a hold of him, trap him, hold the head, trap the arm, like hold him down here so he doesn't posture up and punch, okay? I mean like this, right, it's okay. Same thing for side mount. We always talk about side mount. Keep your hands inside, okay? So that way he doesn't choke you and you keep your hands protected your arms from arm bars, okay? But really, in a street self-defense situation, he can elbow you here, okay? So hands come, come like this, okay? For a street self-defense situation, you wanna have your hands wrapping the guy breaking the posture and blocking any space for him to posture up and punch you. So we need to be aware of adapting your techniques for a street self-defense situation. Another important aspect you have to consider is the ground aspect. In a sports jujitsu, we practice in soft mats which allow for us to execute some techniques. In a self-defense situation, you have to account for the surface that you might be fighting on to be pavement, 
or cement hard concrete so that will definitely uh, prevent you from doing certain techniques like for example drop into your knees it's very common here because we have the protection of the mats to just kind of like drop knees on the ground for double leg takedowns right but imagine dropping like that in in concrete you're gonna shatter your knees and that will be the end of it half the drops yonagi let's see if i can do it i have bad knees it hurts even on the mat but i have some people who come here and they go drop yonagi where both knees drop to the ground and then they take the guy over okay guys i feel like you have to stay away <coughs> from going knees on the ground in a street self-defense self -defense scenario. And that also includes your head. In Jiu Jitsu, we use our heads as post in many techniques. <clears throat> uh, for example, chokes. We always do cross collar choke like this, right? Put in the hand, and then what do we do? We put the head as post, right? But, of course, the mats are soft and can uh, allow for my head to go on the ground. Mm. And now my head being the pose here, free my hand to finish the choke, and I'm here. Now bump me again. Look, I use my head as a pose mm. uh, to finish that choke. But in three situation, that would be a big <clears throat> impact might break your skull open the same thing here let me i just remember one clock choke where my head goes on the ground because sometimes guys roll right roll and i put my head to prevent the roll if i don't put my head the guy roll right but when i do this with my head down here when he rolls i put my head and i just keep finishing here okay but i'm very aware that I'm never gonna use my head as a post in a scenario of a street cell defense. Another position you should avoid in cell defense is the turtle position. In Jiu Jitsu, we use that a lot, especially if we, if we wanna avoid a pass, let's say you pass in Jiu Jitsu, the person pass and get side mount, and that would be three points for him in a sport situation, right? So what the guys do when they are about to get past, they go and they go on turtle position, okay? And now this turtle position can work, okay? You can stay here permanently and just prevent the chokes, okay? And work takedowns or sweeps from the turtle position. We develop a lot of techniques from the turtle. In a self defense, if you stay on the turtle for too long, there comes the soccer kicks, the knee to the face, the elbows to the back, okay? So, total position could be a bad position and you can avoid it. Now, with that being said, you might go to the total, but don't stay there for too long. What do you say, Jay? Uh, right. Temporary total? Like if it's I feel like, for example, if you have a knee on belly and you start punching me here, I can give my back and get to a temporary turtle, but then from here, either go for your legs or look to get up back to my feet, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't, you don't spend a, at all. I don't think I'm gonna be there like for too long. Like let's say a uh, double hander hook. Like if, if I'm forced to go to my turtle here, I'm gonna like look to, mm. right? But not just to, Stay in the total and right. park in the total, okay? Uh, for example, side mount like this, right? Like run, 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 run. Now re-guard, maybe re-guard. Oh, I'm getting the guard. Maybe that work going out in the total, but quickly either get up or look for a takedown or re-guard but definitely don't go to the turtle and just stay on the turtle. And the worst position, uh, just in case, is 
throttle with hands on the ground because even elbows on the ground with your hands protecting on head dot this might even be somehow a little bit defensive somehow some kind of protection but hands on the ground head up this is a, a, a position that you should avoid at all times okay oh. Oh. this is gonna be an immediate knockout okay guys another very important thing to consider is how you stand up in a street self-defense situation okay many times we see in jujitsu that for whatever reason the match is over you see guys standing like uh, they go like this you see black belts that are sometimes teaching the instructionals and they, that's a typical way to stand up right but that would be worse way to stand up in a street self-defense situation, okay? Imagine that you create that uh, habit of standing up, you have a guy here, you say, hey man, what's your problem? He push you, but pushing would be even, not even that bad. But let's say this guy is here talking trash, I'm sitting down, right? I need to get up, hey man, what's your problem? Boom, knee to the face, punch in the face, okay? So, don't stand up anyway. You always stand up considering that you might have a, a opponent in front of you that might be trying to kick you. So the proper way is doing your technical stand up or the stand up in base where when the guy is here, instead of me coming towards him with no base and exposing my face, I have my face protected and I jump back and I keep my hands up as soon as I get up. Okay guys, so I would say for this to create this habit, make sure you get up in base all the time. Even when you are just doing regular sparring, if you are at home, if you are in a, outside eating in the beach and you need to stand up, always stand up in base. Another technique and or set of techniques that you should avoid are all the techniques that involve flying. Flying triangles or flying arm bars, you should not do them in a street cell defense situation. And the reason is clear. Why don't we do them? Slams? Exactly. If you even catch the guy in a flying triangle, boom, he can easily slam you. The reason why you get away with that or some athletes get away with that in a sports situation is that once they fly and catch the triangle, the opponent is not allowed to slam, so they just go to the ground and they finish it there, okay? But even in a sport, if you watch, uh, if you go to uh, YouTube and you watch some of the common injuries that happen, mm -hmm. It's because uh, athletes were trying to do flying things and they miss. So once they miss, they fall on their back and they get unconscious. So no flying triangles in a street situation or flying arm bars. Should we do a demonstration? I cannot do flying things, guys. I never even took the time to perfect a flying technique i feel like i would never use it in a even in a sport i feel like even in a sport situation i feel like it'd be risky there and i feel like in a self-defense situation it's just the worst idea to do a flying technique also jump guard okay it's very common in jujitsu to jump guard pull the guy and then start working here okay but that strategy will get you slammed, okay? Like where you come in here and you jump, you're gonna get slammed. Boom, that's immediate knockout, okay? And with that being said, uh, even yeah. pulling guard, try to avoid it, okay? Now, can you do some techniques that involve a sacrifice, cannot throw, Yes, you can, but 
not let no be your strategy that you are fighting. Oh, so we're fighting, okay. We're fighting and that your strategy is to just pull the guy in your car, okay? Mm. What I feel like you should try to do always when you're fighting is to try to take the guy down and be on top, okay? Avoid pulling guard in a street fight. Now, if the guy takes you down, right? And yes, of course, get him in your guard and start working your guard techniques. Now, with that being said, there are some techniques that you can practice and involve, like move your hips back, that involve you kind of sacrifice throws. I feel like those are good if you perfect them to do in a street situation, right? Like that one, or let's say you're in a fight here and the guy is leaning forward and you drop into a, a tomoenage. You can do a tomoenage in a street situation. I feel like that would work. The guard pulling guard option should be maybe the last resort. Don't even consider it. Also depends, right? What if you are, what if there is a multiple opponents, right? You don't want to pull guard. Right, right. What if the surface has like, you, you know, outside a bar, there's broken bottle, there is a uh, glass on the floor. You don't want to pull guard, right? You don't even want to go to the ground. So those are aspects that you need to consider. Uh, you, don't wanna, you don't even want to go to the bar. Don't go to bars. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is this, if you're in a fight, try to go on top, okay? And avoid the guard pull. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like it, please subscribe. And I should finish by saying that you should always practice and enjoy the sport of Jiu Jitsu. But my suggestion to you is to at least once a week, like we do in this academy, have your partner put on gloves, you put on gloves and practice standing with punches involved. Of course, it's not MMA, don't try to break your partner's nose or anything like that. But I feel like it's gonna give you awareness of mm, punches. One right. thing is starting like this, right? And another thing is starting with your partner like this, right? Where now you have to practice like entering, right? Or if for whatever reason the fight goes to the ground, you have to practice hand position here right and consider uh, the 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 guy's ability to strike you okay if you practice once a week with punches involved in your sparring i feel like you will have no problem making a distinction between techniques for sport and techniques for self-defense enjoy subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.